Nick Milvoy. And this is Jason Shadrick. And this is the 100 Guitarists podcast presented by Premier Guitar, where we're talking about the 100 guitarists we think that you should know. If you're interested in getting in touch, please hit us at 100 Guitarists. That's 100 Guitarists at PremierGuitar.com. Or text us, leave us a voicemail at 319 423 9734. How are you doing today, Jason? Doing well. We've had a lot of uh, voicemails and text to wade through, yes. um, especially from last week's Brian May episode. Yes. And this was like one of the first episodes today's topic, which we're going to get to in a second, which everybody who's already listening already knows who we're talking about, that I was like, this is the one that I'm looking forward to the most because any reason to dig into Bill Frizzell's discography, oh, man. I'm, I'm all for. I'm all for. But today's episode is sponsored by, not coincidentally, Collings Guitars. You ever played a Collings? You played a Collings. I played a, I played a few Collings. Yeah, I'm a I'm a fan. <clears throat> yes, and they are made. They are handcrafted at their shop in Austin, Texas. They build customized electric guitars, acoustic guitars, and mandolins with a focus on world class quality, consistency, tone, and playability. They offer a variety of custom options for most models, including pickups, inlays, neck profiles, and more. And they are built from the sound up. And connecting with today's topic, which is Bill Frizzell, you can often see Bill playing an I-30LC, which is a fully hollow, trestle-braced electric um, that are loaded with Ron Ellis pickups, which are also the pickups in Julian Lodge's signature Collings. Mm, So I've I've played Julian's signature Collings. I've not played a an LC, but um, anytime I go to NAMM, I make sure to swing by the Collings booth and uh, at least put my hands on a couple of them because around where I'm at, there are not many available to get your hands on. Yeah, I don't see a lot, but I have a few friends who have them, and I've gotten to pick them up and spend some time with them. I've also played some Waterloos, uh, Mm -hmm. which are Collings, and man, they really check a lot of boxes for me. Um, I did at NAMM this year. I made a video, one of our one of our videos um, with Collins, and they showed off some prototypes, and it's just hard not to fall in love with these guitars. Yeah, they're incredible guitars. So head on over to CollinsGuitars.com and uh, and check them out. All right, Nick, I know you're Here a Bill are. Frizzell fan. Let's uh, before we uh, <coughs> before we really get in, just to get started, I'm curious. Do you remember when you how you first heard or experienced Bill Frizzell's guitar playing. Yes, but I'm not going to tell you about it right now because that has to do with something that we talk about later in the show. Okay. So I'm going to pass that question back to you, (laughs) and I will hit that question at the appropriate time. So I first heard Bill Frizzell, um, I think it was like my first year of college or something, somebody told me about him, described his music as Pink Floyd jazz, which really was like all I needed to hear. Um, I don't think I don't know. If I I wouldn't describe it that way to somebody. I disagree. But I, yeah, I don't I don't agree with that necessarily. But I think it was about like the Sonics, you know, just like cool electric guitar sounds. Um, and it probably and, had everything to do with the particular album he yes. was listening to. Yes. Right. I'm I'm sure it had to do with yeah. that. Yeah. I remember like I was trying to figure out if I actually even like jazz music if I even like jazz guitar and I heard this album and I was like, okay, I'm in this guy is at least this guy is really cool. And I heard a couple of Bill Frizzell albums, but that summer I remember I went to the village Vanguard to see the Bill Frizzell trio with Tony Shear and Kenny Wallison. And I am not exaggerating when I say I walked in there and I remember my friend and I went to some record stores and, uh, saying something along the lines to to my friend like i don't know i just feel like i i haven't ever heard anything at this i haven't heard anything that sounds like totally new i'm you know 18 years old and i, I think it was like you know I, I think i've heard all the styles of music you know i had some stupid thing that an 18 year old would say like i thought i heard all styles of guitar playing and i went into that show at the village vanguard and i sat close and, you know, the Village Vanguard, have you ever been there? Mm-mm. It's pretty small. I, I don't know what the capacity is. It, you know, it could be 100 people, could be 150 people. Um, and 
I think, you know, for better or worse, I'm not exaggerating when I say, I think that seeing Bill Frizzell that night changed my life. Like after that, that was such an out of left field experience. Even though I heard the records, the feeling I got from seeing Bill Frizzell play live and improvise and the way he played in the moment was like nothing I ever saw. I feel like I've like chased that feeling, that sound ever since. And I will never be able to play like that. Um, but yeah, I think, I, I think that is a life changing moment for me. That was the first time I really experienced it. And I've seen him so many times since then. I've, uh, for me, he was one of the first like telly jazz guys. Yeah. For me, um, that I saw him and Mike Stern and, but I was always way more drawn to Frizzell's aesthetic than like learning the licks from him or transcribing his stuff. Like, yeah. And there's been many times where, like, this amp behind me, if I need to, like, take a break, I'll just have my Telecaster, my Schroeder or something, and I'll just turn the reverb way up on a clean amp and just pretend I'm Bill Frizzell for 10 minutes. <laughs> like, you know, that to me, like, getting that aesthetic and trying to just interpret a melody, like, very simply and very straight ahead, like, chills me out. Like, Bill yeah. Frizzell is, like, you know, my center point when I'm just like, okay, don't have to worry about blazing chops. I just need to play a melody on a Telecaster with a lot of reverb, clean tone, <laughs> and I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. He does it's way like more than that. It's like the distillation of everything he goes sets forth to play. Like that's what he plays. He plays the 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 heart of the thing. Yes, and um, which made some of my which might surprise you on some of the choices I make on our <laughs> album list later on. All right. Um, cool. So we have a. Uh, Mutual friend here, Mary. Yeah, Mary called Halverson called in. Um, Mary Halverson has played with Bill before. Um, I interviewed both of them a while ago for another publication when they released an album that was a, a tribute to Johnny Smith. It's a really cool guitar duo version um, of the <coughs> Johnny Smith tunes that I love. It's super avant-garde. The way that the two of them play together is so interesting and I, I can't say enough about it. But here's what Mary had to say about Bill Frizzell. Hey, Nick and Jason, it's Mary Halverson here to say a few words about Bill Frizzell, one of my all-time favorite guitar players and I think one of the most important voices on the guitar in our time. Um, one, of, one of the most influential, too. I mean, you hear guitarists everywhere imitating Bill, um, but nobody can even come close to doing what he does. I'm just such a unique voice um first of all just the versatility of what he does the the depth of his music the types of music he's played his harmonic and melodic sense um it's just totally unique and and one of a kind but people really don't talk enough about his feel and his rhythmic concept which i think is super deep um and also just the way he can imply so much harmony with just a couple notes um, it's, you know, it's almost like an abstract painter, like not having to fill in everything, but you just, you hear it somehow. Um, it's really beautiful. So yeah, just Bill's incredible. I don't even know <laughs> what else to say about Bill. Um, also just a beautiful person and uh, no ego, which is so refreshing. Just a uh, great person, great guitarist. And, you know, there's, there's nobody like him. All right. Thank you, Mary, for calling in. Um, yes. The rhythmic concept thing, it's, yeah, it, it's not the first thing that most people talk about when they talk about Bill Frizzell. Case in point, neither of us brought up his rhythmic concept when we were just talking about Bill Frizzell. But it is something that is so interesting about his playing because he can play so sparsely and so spare and so open, and yet things still groove. Mm -hmm. Right? The he knows exactly where to put, you know, two notes together just like you can play two notes and imply a giant chord and and the groove it's amazing i'm telling you we, we need to get to the list first because i have a specific track <laughs> when you start talking when you may start talking about that i was like a specific track came to mind it's on one of the albums i'm going to talk about okay so yeah we're going to dive into that more we'll put a pin pin yes. right here there you go yes. pin in that um we also got a call though that i think you know just covers this you know what we love about Bill Frizzell's playing um, from a uh, friend of the show, Creston Lee. Creston made a couple of the guitars that are sitting behind me. Um, and, uh, you know, here, here's what Creston had to say. 
Hi, this is Preston Lee. I'm a guitar builder here in Burlington, Vermont, and a fan of Bill Frizzell's uh, guitar playing and musicianship. And I've been thinking about what it is I like about Bill, um, and it's so different than what I like about pretty much any other guitar player I could name. Um, you know, most people, it's the sound of the guitar and the, and the notes they choose and the way that fits into the greater piece of music. Um, with Bill, uh, though it sounds like a slight, and I don't mean it to be, the sound of his electric guitar playing doesn't necessarily, you know, tug at my heart. Um, I like it, but it's not, it's, to me, it's sort of secondary to the notes he chooses. And um, the way he can kind of imply so much with so little, it's like, you know, it's like a, the, the chalk outline of a crime scene or like lights on a harbor dock at night where you can, you kind of get the whole picture uh, with just the most minimal expression, you know, two notes that imply a chord and a chord that implies a whole, uh, you know, motion in the piece of music, a uh, single note ringing against, a single fretted note ringing against an open note. Um, it's, it's so evocative of so much more, despite being so less. You never hear him play fast. You never hear him strum a full chord. It's a, such a unique approach to the guitar. And quite frankly, with so much of what we call a jazz guitar, just kind of washes over me in a in a flood of um, you know fast notes that sort of mean nothing to me. But then Bill will play just a couple of a couple of notes that it seems like he's really working for. You know, he's chewing on his tongue and he's looking at his hand. Um, but it's so graceful and it kind of moves in and out of time, but it never it never distracts from what he's doing. Um, and despite being a person who you know, makes a living with dealing with electric guitars and certainly inclined towards the electric guitar, my favorite performances of Bill's, and I've seen them in all kinds of ensembles, big and small, is when he plays acoustic guitar by himself. And it's just sort of the raw essence of what he does without the kind of shimmery effects that he likes to use. Um, and these, these acoustic notes that just sort of hang in the air, uh, you know, when he plays a song like Hard Times um, with a real kind of distinct melody that is just uh, implied with, with so little. All right. Thank you, Creston, for your call. Jason, have you ever seen Bill Frizzell play solo? No, I've not. I've only seen, I've seen trio and quartet. Um, but yeah. I mean, seen a, I've seen a bunch of YouTube live stuff. But I've only seen him play trio and quartet. Okay, I've seen him in a variety of settings. Uh, I think I've seen him just once where he played a full set, long set. I remember, um, like he it might have been a two set show. I, I don't really remember, but he played. I've seen him play solo, and uh, like he played some acoustic, he played some electric, and uh, I can't agree more with what Creston says there. It's like. But that just goes back to what we were saying before, the way he just can imply so much with just a couple notes together. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, the placement of the, those notes. He might play a C sharp and a G together, but it's like maybe that G is an open G against the C sharp. And the way that those ring out together, like, have so much, they imply so much rhythm and harmony that it's and sound in, yeah. in the choices he makes. Have you ever seen the, um, there's a, a series of books. I know you're totally ready to go to the list, but <laughs> have you ever seen there's a series of books that John Zorn put out called Arcana? Mm -hmm. And in the first one, there's a lesson from Bill Frizzell. Have you seen this? I have. I have. I don't can't remember what number it is. I usually have it here on my shelf. Uh, I have the one with the Julian Lodge, mm. 12 observations of guitar, 10 observations of guitar. Um, those books are great. They're really great. I had the whole I have the whole series up to a point and then I I think like the last two, the most recent two, I don't have. But that first one is my favorite because of the Frizzell thing. That like mm. I if anybody this isn't published anywhere on the internet that I know of. You have to buy the book from yeah. Zadik.com, T Z A D I K, um, and get it directly from John Zorn. And uh but it's totally worth it because Bill Frizzell like talks about it's just a guitar lesson um about how he you know puts notes together basically it's amazing yeah highly recommend the arcana series i mean every entry in those books to get off on a slight digression is like there's one where ava mendoza i think interviews herself 
Oh wow! You I know? don't think I've seen that one. That's I think that's also in <laughs> that's the Julian, cool. the one that has Julian's stuff in it. But I think Matheny's written in there. A lot of There's guitar one with players. There's Jim O'Rourke talking about films. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good so, stuff. It's really great cool. stuff. I was just looking at uh, Bill's schedule. I was like, all this talk. I'm like, where's he's. <laughs> When you mentioned the Vanguard, all of August, he's playing the Vanguard. He's doing three weeks of the Vanguard. I should probably go see him. Maybe you want to come out? Mm. Come on, man. Village I Vanguard. I know. You've never that been. Be great. I never, I've been by it. I've never been inside of it. Yeah, come on out. I know. I should. We'll, hi, we'll fire up the PG jet. Yeah, dude. So. All right. I think you should go first in our list of our favorite Bill Frizzell recordings. So I made a list of 10 of my favorite ones. And I'm gonna improvise which ones I pick. Yeah, my list of my my top five list is eight long. And this <laughs> is the first one, the first time I really consciously heard Bill Frizzell. To answer your question, I was at the library, public library. They had a huge CD selection, and I picked this album simply because of the cover Ooh. of the album of Bill's album. Do you know what album I'm talking about? I wonder if, if it's going to be... I, I, do you want me to guess? Go ahead, yeah. Because this is maybe my favorite cover of his, and this is one of my choices. Bill Frizzell with Dave Holland and Elvin Jones? Nope. No. No, Nashville. That's an extremely <laughs> different cover. <laughs> Bill Frizzell, Nashville. It's just a yeah, dude holding a, great a guitar. Cover. Yeah. yeah. It's just a picture of him holding, uh, I want to say, like a Ken Parker arch top. I think that's what it is. Right? Yeah. And um, it's like, I wanted to get into jazz, I had I had heard this name being floated around and people mentioning in various guitar magazines or whatever, you know. This was way before streaming, so I couldn't just pop a name in. And uh, I was flipping through the CD section at the library, and I, I was like, oh, that's that guy's name. And he's holding this really interesting-looking acoustic guitar. And um, I was like, oh, let me check this out. And it was... I mean, if you would have said, okay, listen to this record... And, you know, let me know what you think. I, I would have put this, like, in the same kind of almost modern new grass, like a Bela Fleck mm -hmm. yeah. strength in numbers. Like, you know, Jerry Douglas is on Dobro. Adam Steffi is on mandolin. Um, Pat Bergeson plays incredible harmonica on it, which, full circle, Pat later played on my record. <clears throat> so that was that me and Bill have similar taste in harmonica players, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, so, uh, yeah, that is... It's it's not like I mean it's jazz it's acoustic, um, it's a great album to like put on in the background and just listen to and and for a lot yeah. of the stuff with with Bill for me it's just like trying to soak up the the ambiance and the vibe rather than really breaking down you know like like that would be an approach I would do with like Matheny or Mike Stern is like really break down how they're navigating this or that. But for Frizzell, I just want to soak up the vibes. I just want to soak up the vibes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, for me on that album, the first track, Give Me a Holler, I just love that song. I love playing that song. Yep. The riff is cool. Um, love it. Good choice. Yeah, I know. Well, I gave away my first choice, which is the album that is also the way I was introduced to Bill Frizzell. Um which is Bill Frizzell with Dave Holland and Elvin Jones. Um, that record for me, it is just like a soaking up the vibe thing. I think when I first heard it, it was just like, I had never heard music that sounded like that. To me, it's like, you know, I always had this idea about what jazz sounded like. And it was more like a bebop kind of thing, straight ahead jazz. And then, you know, this didn't read to me as much as, I mean, Dave Holland and Elvin Jones, for anybody that doesn't know, are like, as all star as a rhythm section as yeah. a rhythm section can get. Mm -hmm. um, both of those guys, I'm not even going to mention their credentials. They're of the highest credentials. You, you, so it's like, here's this super jazz intensive trio. Um, and I think the story is that they booked uh, two days for the recording session. And then Elvin didn't show up for the first day. Um, there was like a scheduling conflict and they didn't know where he was or what happened. This is either in the liner notes or in an interview for Zellgate. Um, and uh, so they only did, they did it all in one day and then Bill went and did a bunch of overdubs. And so when I first heard it, I was like, 
this is like music I'd never heard before. It's not jazz, but it's not really rock, but he's using a lot of effects on his guitar, all that stuff. Like it's just, it's just creative music, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but at some point I remember like years after I first heard it, like, you know, I don't know, within the last 10 years or something, um, I came back to that record and like really listened and thought about the arrangements and the production ideas and the way that Frizzell overdubs his guitars and tried to think about like, okay, so there's always an acoustic guitar, almost always an acoustic guitar going and an electric guitar. And sometimes there's even more electric guitars. Um, what did he play in the room? And then what is overdubbed and how, you know, how do you hear this stuff together just as a way to learn about guitar arranging. Yeah. And the version uh, of moon river on that record is killer. That's a really good version. It's killer. Yeah. All right. That was right, on my, that was on my list of 10. Oh. Um, well, there you go. I saved you one. You <laughs> saved me one. Okay. So I'm looking here. All right. I'm going with On Broadway Volume 2. Ooh. And it's my favorite uh, album of Frizzell playing standards. So it's it's Bill Frizzell, Charlie Hayden on bass, Joe Lovano on tenor, and Paul Motion on drums. Which we should say is a Paul Motion record, technically. It is, yes. It's Though technically a Paul Motion record. Those guys um, are the same, you know, they're the same band. And those three in particular, Frizzell, Motion, and Hayden, played together a lot. Yes. Um, and I think Lovano hopped. And I, Lovano. I, and, yeah, I mean, the and, but they've played, like, in trio versions, like, subgroups, like, without with them without Lovano. There's a fair amount of stuff. And with and Frizzell, Motion, Lovano have a lot of stuff together so um yeah when you want to hear him play on like all the things you are you know just hear how and these people are like these four particular musicians are really masters of kind of i don't say deconstructing but like breaking down a standard what would be considered a jazz standard in a completely new way you know a mm. lot of a lot of the other albums that like levano motion and Frizzell did are completely improvised. They just show up and play, you know, and then make stuff. Are they? Are there? Are they free or are are there sketches that Paul would bring in? I mean, who knows? I'm really? not really sure. Who, I know I that mean, there are tunes on some of them, but they're. I think they're. Yeah, I mean, I they're right. listed as tracks and tunes, but I I want to say there's been a couple albums that have just been. They just improvised stuff on the spot and called it, you know. We're gonna call this tune this or something, you know. Those guys just sound so good together. They it's like, are amazing. They're so keyed into each other's vibes that it's so hard to know. So already my list is better than yours, but go ahead. What's your next one? Well, I would say, and this saves me an entry to my list, that that is my favorite of the on Broadway series of mm -hmm. records they did, and that um honorable mention is the Monk in Motion record, which is yeah. that same group, a couple other guests. Uh, I think Dewey Redmond's on there, Jerry Allen's on there. Uh, but they're playing monk tunes, and it's yes. all the things you just said. Um, okay, so my next choice is um, the live album. It's it's just called Live. It's uh, Bill Frizzell, Kermit Driscoll, Joey Barron. It was recorded in 1991, came out in 1995. Um, for me, I remember when I first heard this, I remember first hearing it before I was ready to hear music that was this weird. Mm -hmm. to my ears now it's not that weird but it's like i i didn't know what to make of this music and i just kept listening to it and kept listening to it and that's an album that i've because of that i've listened to so much over the years that it's like more than any other bill frizzell record i have those solos memorized and i have the way that those guys play together like joey baron doesn't he's not really like always playing a beat it's really fractured what he plays behind bill um, they're just like, th it's like three guys soloing together and Kermit Driscoll is playing slap bass in a way that like in a non rhythmic slap bassy kind of way. Uh, I love it. I love the sound of it. And, um, every version of tune on that record, uh, because they were, they were playing together for years before that. I think that that's the final recording of that group, um, that have been, they've been going for years and sometimes as a trio, sometimes with Hank Roberts on cello. Um, every version of those tunes is like the best version up to that point. That he I mean, played. definitely Strange Meeting and Rag. Mm -hmm. 
uh, those two are real standouts to me. And Have a Little Faith in Me. Oh, that's a great version of Have a Little Faith that's in Me. That's really good. The version good of Sonny one. Rollins' Nomo also. There's like, yeah. you know that? It, with yep. the intro where he's using the Digitech PDS. And uh, <laughs> it's it's the craziest sounding thing. Um, I was obsessed with that pedal because of that track. That is my second favorite Bill Fazell live record. So let me ask you what's my your first? first one. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm I already have it loaded up. My <laughs> first one is East West, and yes. so it's a double live record. Half of it was recorded at Yoshi's in San Francisco with Kenny Wilson on drums and Victor Kraus from Nashville fame, the album Nashville fame. Um, and the second half was recorded with Kenny Wilson and Tony Schur at the Vanguard. Mm-hmm. And to, to bring it back to the rhythm guitar stuff, his rhythm guitar playing on Heard It Through the Grapevine. Yep. So good. Like, Unbelievable. Hands down. That's, that's on the playlist. That's going on the playlist <laughs> because it's, it's a melody and a tune that everybody knows. It's almost ubiquitous, right? But you're like two minutes into playing – or hearing this tune, and you're like, wait a sec, this is, you forget that it's, I heard it through the grapevine. It's so good, and so, and his rhythm playing on that is so smooth and so funky that, and how he interprets that that melody is like, to me, is like easily one of the top three to four Bill Frizzell tracks I've ever heard was that version of her. And, you know, he does Wine and Roses on there. Um, but yeah, that to me is East West is my favorite live Bill Frizzell record. So you saved me an entry there because that one yeah. for me, and that's the. <laughs> it's funny because I'm I, telling you, you know, we were saying before we recorded this, we were wondering how much our lists were going to overlap. Not only do that do those interlap overlap, but I was going to say talk about her to through the grapevine too because <sighs> I forgot that was it. I just said it's so good. It's so great. Okay, so I'll pick a different album um blues dream 2001 mm. yep i uh was not on my list you know that I one for it. me it's like the thing that i get from that record maybe that's different than other records is the writing the writing the arrangement i mean bill of course sounds great on there but it's a larger ensemble and um it's not uh it's not just like a guitar album it's an arrangement. It's a composition album. Every tune on there is so good. I think yeah. at some point I've learned how to play every song on there just to like get into that vibe, um, mm. which is like this bluesy, rootsy thing, but it's sort of like alternate reality blues. Like it's not the way the blues sound, but it's like some other thing. The cover of the album is cool. Um, the cover, The cover of the album was actually shot just a few miles from where I live. Um, and, uh, it's just that, you know, that car, I don't know cars enough to, uh, tell you what kind of car it is, uh, that car in front of the water tower at the gas station at night. And like, man, what, what a setting for that music. So blues dream for me, the song Ron Carter. Um, so good. I love it. All right. So my previous three picks, I think if you put those three together, Here's here's a pretty wide group or pretty wide um, uh, representation of what Bill does. My mm. last two picks I'm reserving for stuff that's a little more weird. Okay. So the next one is Naked City Live Volume 1 Knitting Factory 1989. So This one totally surprises me. I didn't see you picking that one. And it's, it's specifically for one track called Batman. Have you heard this? Oh, yeah. It's like Frizzell does Boomer Blues, <laughs> and it's great, <laughs> right? It's so good. Like he's just he's he's playing just blues licks that we know and love, but it sounds like Bill Frizzell. I mean, it's it's so good. So so Naked City was like it was John Zorn's band, right? Mm-hmm. And most of the other Naked City is is pretty heavy, pretty yes. heavy, pretty and extreme extreme yes this that and there's it touches on that in on this album but this track batman is very not like naked city <laughs> very not like <laughs> you know it's it's like the, just this weird juxtaposition i mean and i gotta admit 
I don't spend a lot of time just spinning Naked City albums, <laughs> you know, when I want to feel like I want to listen to some Bill Frizzell. I'm very glad it exists in the world. I'm glad yeah. he got all that aggression out. But they were so hard and so fast that I'm like, when I flip this on, I'm like, oh, Batman, man. This The the blues licks on Batman, like, all day. All day. I'll do it. <laughs> Frizzell is a blues cat. I'll take it. All right. Yeah. What's your next one? That um, N- Naked City is is the craziest thing yeah. that Bill Frizzell has ever been a part, to, part of. But that's not saying too much because it's sort of just the craziest band. So the next one I'm going to pick is 1996's Quartet album. Um, that It's a quartet, but it's a very weird instrumentation. It's guitar, trumpet, violin, trombone. It features uh, Ron Miles on trumpet, Avon Kang on violin, and Curtis Folks on trombone. The arrangements on this record mm-hmm. sound like nothing that exists in other music other than people imitating Bill Frizzell. And I think that that's all I can really say about it. There's a track on here um, called it's the first track is tales from the far side. And it sounds like Gary Larson's far side cartoon as music. And it was written for it. It was written for it, but it's like he he captured it. Like that's the weird drawings, the weird, you know, it's, that's what it sounds like to me. Like it, it, he perfectly encapsulates that. And, uh, I feel like I've learned so much from those arrangements. And I mean, egg, ra- you know, egg Bill, radio, egg radio. That? Yeah. The, yeah. So it's like Bill plays a lot of the same tunes in different settings that we haven't really mentioned that. Um, so it's like the versions of the tunes, 20 years is on here. That's on some other records, egg radio, um, egg radio. I love that's really great on um, a couple different recordings. Um, Kafaro's theme, but they, they just sound really wide and really sparse on this record yeah and i mean bill's done a bit of soundtrack work and this to me i think sometimes it gets overlooked because it's basically a collection of his soundtrack work yeah for the most part but man would i love to have somebody like a big budget movie have bill just do the whole soundtrack for i know right you know like a coen brothers movie or something oh my god (laughs) that would be you imagine you know, like I could see him doing a Coen Brothers movie, or I could see him doing like Dumb and Dumber Three. <laughs> I think that would be. I I, I would, would love enjoy either one. Both equally. Yeah. Equally. Uh, this was not on my list. I think after we get done with our official five, we should go through the rest, the the ones we didn't choose off our list. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so last one I have here. Um, I'm gonna go with um okay not not weird but very obscure this is gary peacock album called just so happens oh, i don't know that gary peacock upright bass player in keith jarrett's trio so the this, this album with uh just so happens it came out in 94 the production seems a bit dated to me you know how the, the sounds are it's it definitely you know the the tones itself especially on bass aren't my favorite and and bill's acoustic sound isn't his best but I think the playing is really interesting, hearing Bill in this kind of small, obviously, duo setting. There's a great version of Red River Valley um, and Good Morning Heartache on here, which I think were some of the first times I think Bill um, kind of dipped into that really traditional cowboy kind mm-hmm. of Americana yeah. thing, um, which, man, you just imagine, you know, Five years before this, he was ripping with Naked City, and now he's with Gary Peacock playing Home on the Range, literally. <laughs> You're like, well, that's wild. And this was right before Nashville comes out. So this is him getting into it, and then Nashville, it's full-on country. Yeah. Full-on right. country. So that's... Uh, check that one out. So that one, th- those five, that's the best. So we're done. We can end the episode now. <laughs> Hold up. Hold right. up now. On Bill Frizzell's website, uh, he has a live download series. He's had this for years. Um, number 14 is one that in past couple years I have come back to over and over again. Um, it was recorded live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina on March 22nd, 2009. And it's just listed as Bill Frizzell live download series number 14. That's the name of it that you would find. Um, and it's Bill Frizzell playing duo with Greg Lease. Mm. Um the two of those guys, Greg Lees is playing steel. 
two of those guys speak such a common language and hearing the way that they weave between each other. You know, we just, you're wearing a stone shirt. We just did the, uh, the stones episode a couple weeks ago. And, you know, Keith always talks about the ancient art of weaving that he and Ronnie would do. And yeah. he and, you know, all of the guitar players that he was, you know, counterpart to, um, would do, but, uh, you know, Frizzell and Lise are tuned into that ancient art of weaving thing. That those guys, there's no rhythm role, there's no lead role. They're both just playing the songs together. And if you haven't, have you heard this one? No, but you need to hit me. I, I got to hit you. Yeah. It is an excellent recording of a very cool instrumentation duo. Is is Lise playing slide the whole time? Laps? He, yeah. Yeah, Lap. yeah. He's playing, he's on steel the whole time. I think he's playing. Um, you know, I'm not really good at picking this out. He's listed as just playing steel guitars. I think he's playing both lap steel and pedal steel at various times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They should make right. a record. I mean, I know that is technically a record, but they should make more. They should. I mean, like a good, like proper studio record, I guess. Yeah. So, so we got to call, um, our good friend of the podcast, Mike Baguetta, the great guitar player from the band MSSV, among many others. Uh, he left a call where he mentioned a couple of his favorite albums, so I wanted to pop that in here. Here's what Mike had to say. I hung out with my friend Brad Shepik, great guitar player, and uh, this must have been around 2000, 2001 or 2000. And I was asking him about how he plays in the Tiny Bell Trio, that Dave Douglas band, with no bass. And he said, well, you know, I, I do okay, but if you really want to know how to do it, you got to listen to Bill Frizzell with the Paul Motion Trio. So I went out and I got Live in Tokyo, the Motion record, and then I got Bill Frizzell's trio album just called Live, which was with Kermit Driscoll and Joey Barron. And instantaneously, I felt a kinship with the way he was approaching music and the way he was dealing with guitar in music, I'd been kind of using little samplers and little looper things inspired, mainly inspired by David Torn, and also trying to kind of approach guitar like a, more of a piano kind of thing, or just, and also the idea of not being bound to a genre, like, yeah, I guess I'm in this jazz world to some extent, but I, I also like, you know, Nirvana, and I like Fela Kuti, and Ebenezer Obey, and I like, um, you know, did I mention Ornette Coleman already and Thelonious Monk and Fishbone and Sonic Youth and whatever. So kind of trying to figure out how do I justify all this stuff in the world and my life and music. And then all of a sudden I kind of heard those records and I said, oh, yeah, this guy's doing it. It was another one of those very few kind of touchstone moments for me in my life where, you know, for me, just speaking – only for myself as one can do everything kind of felt supported in hearing that he'd already kind of dealt with this stuff so uh hearing him play for the first few few times on those first few records was really uh, important to kind of allowing myself to realize like the important thing is to be yourself it's another great shout out for the uh the paul motion trio and bill frizzell's yeah. role in that band as well as the live record mm -hmm. that yeah Mike's and Mike's a, a uniquely qualified, I think, flame carrier of that kind of lineage. Mm -hmm. Of he gets left, it. yeah, he gets it. <laughs> he gets it. All right. So uh, as I mentioned before, let's. Uh, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of what uh, didn't make my official top five. Right, uh, is the Have a Little Faith record with Joey mm -hmm. Barron. A lot yep. of that has the Billy the Kid soundtrack stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he also covers a Madonna tune on that on that album. Live to Tell. That's right. Uh, we're talking about Nate City, Holland, East West, Silent Comedy, which is one of his solo improvised albums where he just improvises stuff. Great use of his effects, which special shout out to the Line 6 DL4. Yeah. Special shout out. Yeah. Uh, Ghost Town, another one of his solo albums where he uses a lot of loops. A great version of I'm So Lonesome I Can Cry. Love and then uh, it's kind of a hard to find record, uh, Hemispheres, which is a dual record with Jim Hall. Oh, that is a cool. Was that like an artist share recording? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. What was left off your list? Uh, the ones I left off my list. Uh, music is. I was mm. thinking, you know, similarly to you, get it, get a solo record in there. Music is is just a great one. I wrote a piece, a premier guitar piece, uh, about Bill when that record came out, and that was a really great one. 
Um, and the album Look Out for Hope, that's an 80s mm-hmm. record with Kermit Driscoll, Joey Barron, and Hank Roberts. I love that's a the classic tunes one. On, I love the tunes on that record. Yeah. And it sounds so cool. It's so 80s sounding in my favorite way. I was also thinking about, um, you know, <sighs> Naked City. I, I Naked City played a very uh, special role in my life in finding like crazy esoteric music. Uh, and, you know, I was thinking about which, na- if a Naked City album would fit in there. I don't think I go to those for like overall Bill Frizzell playing necessarily. Um, we did get a call about Naked City. Here's a quick little excerpt from um, from Dave Cousy from Pittsburgh. Here's what he had to say about Naked City. Someone's a fan of Bill Frizzell and his typical records. And then I would say they should go listen to uh, Lang Che by Naked City. Uh, it's quite a bit different. And it's probably, um, you know, the same for Frizzell fans as uh, Zero Tolerance for Silence is for uh, Pat Metheny fans. All right, so I wanted to play that because, uh, you know, thank you, Dave, for calling in. Uh, Leng Che, that album is one track, about a half hour long. And you picked the first Naked City, or the, the live version of the first Naked City record. And if I were thinking about a Naked City that I've listened to the most, it's the album Grand Guignol, which I'm definitely not pronouncing right, and that is 41 tracks over the course of 62 minutes. So that Man. band has a very wide ranging output uh, that uh, people can come to and be fans of for all different reasons. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> I also just wanted to shout out there's an Earth album called The Bees Made Honey and the Lion's Skull that has Bill. He's not on the whole record. Um, he's on a few tracks, but I love the band Earth. And I think that having Bill Frizzell on there was like the coolest thing that they could do because he just fits into their vibe. Like nobody fits into that vibe better than Bill Frizzell would. Mm -hmm. Um, So I love that one too. Dig it. All right. right. I think we did it. Yeah. We definitely covered Bill Frizzell. That's right. Absolutely. We got a lot of stuff. I think, did we each leave this with some listening homework? I think we did, right? Yeah, I do believe so. I want to hear that live download. Yes. And I got to check out the Gary Peacock duo record. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so if we missed anything, you just want to tell us what you love about Bill Frizzell or anything anything you want to share, get at us, 100-100-guitarists at premierguitar.com, or you can call or text. We do not answer the phone. You're just leaving a voicemail. The number is 319-423-9734. All right, we want to thank to our, thanks to our sponsor again, Collings Guitars. Uh, head over to collingsguitars.com and check them out. And we will see you all next week.